Eric Bird. How are you doing? Welcome. <laughs> How are you Principally, you've come over to do some concerts this week, yeah. I think, at the Marquee. Yeah, well, one concert at the Mar Marquee, one, one appearance at the Marquee for three days. For three days, yeah. yeah. How did that come about? Twice, nightly. How, shows did, night. how did that come about, Eric? Um, well, I was over there in the States and began to put this group together. I wanted to come to Europe to work, particularly uh, Germany, to feel out what's happening there technically, mm. see what I could investigate, see what's happening, and then f finally end up in England and, and, and do a gig that I felt that I would be comfortable working at. And uh, from my, my side in, in Los Angeles, I hear very little about what's happening in, in London now. And it's a long time since I've been here. So mm -hmm. um, it was a choice of gigs, you know, what the Rainbow. I heard, you know, the Rainbow was a place to play. But then, I, you know, I, my group primarily is a club group and mm -hmm. it's club music. And the only club that I remember of the right size was the Marquee. So, uh, you know, acoustically it's the right size for us to deliver what we have to deliver. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Any other place would have been too small or too big because the group is in a stage of development right now. And um, we can't afford to go on uh, huge, huge concerts because technically uh, it isn't developed. Mm. We don't have a PA system yet. We're still in the process of designing one. How long has the band been together? Um, about two months. Mm. But I've known the drummer for a long time, and he's wanted to work with me for a long time. But uh, he's such he's so powerful that, that uh, I couldn't find anybody to to uh, crank up to the level that he puts out. Uh, so I just had to sit back for two years and get involved in, in in more in the business rather than the music until I could find another part of the puzzle. Mm. And I found this guitar player, Elon Butler. The drummer's name is Alvin Taylor, by the way, and uh, Randy Reese is on bass, and um, they're just three LA musicians that mm. we put together and, and worked and rehearsed, and uh, that's what we're here for: is mm. to lay what we've rehearsed on the all. Because, because you did House of the Rising Sun, Eric, when you made it, literally in twenty minutes, in two takes, I think. That's the way to record. Right. I that's mean, do you, do you think things are getting a bit sort of defunct these days? You oh, know? absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, I'm not against using 24 track and 16 track, anything to get perfection. But like the mullet, the Mellotron thing is very heavy with me. I've been listening to some music in Europe where guys have um, done incredible symphonies almost, rock and roll symphonies. Mm -hmm. And instead of using a real orchestra, they use the Mellotron. And you can tell when a Mellotron is being used because the arranger inside of his head doesn't... Um, work from the point of view of, of the fact that he's working on a budget with a massive orchestra where each individual instrument is played by an individual person. Mm. See, so he's working with Mellotron, so, he's, so his head, arrangement-wise, he, 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 he throws string sections around too much. So like, when I listen to a record that's been used, and Mellotron's been used, I can tell by listening to the arrangement, whether it's a Mellotron or a real orchestra, right away, and not, not by listening for the sound of the instrument. Mm. And like that to me is an acute uh, uh, flash of the sort of back to mono um, ideology. Right. It's because I'm not really, you know, I don't really think it should go back to mono. Wherever stereo sh is effective, it should be used. But um, but I think it it has been, you know, lo the funk begin to disappear with Motown. I think I think Motown was the first farming out of the funk. It was the first cleaning up and and um, deadening process of the of the, you know, the pork, mm. you know. Mm. What about filming, Eric? Are you still gradually getting involved in film work? Oh, that's my personal private dream. That's my, it's the woman that I've been after all mm. these years. You know, the, the, the medium of the cinema to me is still, just like you saw on the TV screen there before, mm. I mean, you, you could never, you know, all those experiences that we had when we saw Little Richard live, when I was, you know, 15, 16, and you know all those rock and roll experiences. I mean, to to be able to push them together like that, like that segment we just seen there, it mm. really it's really exhilarating. You know, I mean, it, it really it speaks to cinema, it really speaks to people, as does music. So therefore, you know, to use the two together, you know, the audio and the visual together, that's really 
sucking it home to people and really made it, helping them understand the mm. imagery, you know, I mean, getting symbols across. You know. Right. We've got to stop, Eric. Time's okay. run out on this. Thanks for coming in to see us. And I'll see you at the marquee on Thursday. Yeah. Right. Okay.